How's it going? This is Joe Intel, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Denton 85th anniversary speaker. This is Joe, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Wharfdale Denton 85th anniversary. And so Wharfdale has been around since 1932. It's amazing, right? I feel like these speakers are speakers that you're either going to love the way they look or you're not. And you're going to love the way they sound or you're not. And so that's the kind of the common theme with these speakers. Hey, I, I kind of don't like it with the grill off. It looks weird with the thing around the tweeter. It just looks weird. I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the way it looks with the grill off. To me, it looks pretty cool. You know, what's wrong with a woofer? It looks cool. It's like a carbon fiber look. I think it looks cool. I, I, I have no problem with it. Why, why does it look so old? It just looks old. Like, even the wood looks old. Why does, look it, that. Why does it look old? I mean, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a retro look. I mean, that's a whole idea behind it. it's the 85th anniversary. I don't know. I think it looks cool. I like the wood. You know, the wood looks like it would work well if you had like a mid-century modern type of place. And so, yeah, I like the way it looks. What are those? Those are huge. <laughs> well, they're actually not that huge. Uh, I've compared them with some of the other speakers I have, like the SVS Primes and the ELAC UB5. And actually, they're not that much bigger. At first, I thought that they were bigger because they're wider. And that's not a typical look right now. People are going for that slim look. But if you look at compared to the UB5, they're about the same height. But the UB5s are actually deeper. So those those look, look a little bit heavy to me. They look too heavy. All right. All right. Well, luckily, you don't have to carry them around with you everywhere. You can set them on some nice stands like I have here. And uh, you don't have to worry about them being heavy. And plus, to me, heavy is good. If I pick up a lightweight speaker, to me, that means that it might be made out of some cheap wood. And... Yeah, these are using some thicker MDF, I'm assuming, and uh, tells me that they're using high quality parts and that's why it's heavy, so I like heavy. So these are a throwback look to some of the original Denton speakers. And I'll show you a few pictures here. It's pretty cool, I like the way that they look. They look different from all the other speakers that I have and I like that, it's cool. Another thing I can see people complaining about is the price, because these come in at $899, and that is by no means a cheap speaker, but I think that they make up for it. So as I was telling this guy, these aren't the smallest speakers in the world, and yeah, I, one thing I would say is they might not be the smallest bookshelves, but they make up for it in sound. So you can look at these as replacement for towers, because these sound similar to some of the tower speakers that I have. That's how much bass they actually have. And that, that's, that's what's really different about them. Yeah, they're big, but they also have a big sound and that makes up for it. I did some frequency response measurements and you can see that this has bass that goes into the 30s and even into the high 20s. I mean, not with a ton of authority, but it is audible. It's something that you'd notice compared to a speaker that rolls off harder than these speakers do. Other thing that you'll notice here is that it's very flat around the frequencies where the vocal range is. So to me, the vocals are very important and these get vocals right. Vocals sound very realistic compared to some of the other speakers that I've reviewed. So yeah, again, I wanna, I wanna emphasize how much bass these actually have. And you can tell from the frequency response graph that the bass is slightly boosted, but not to the point where it sounds boomy. To me, you, have to, you do have to pull them away from the walls because they will, they will get some of that room gain. So you need to pull them away from the walls but when you do, you'll notice like, wow, these have a very big sound. And not only can they play low, but they can also play loud. And that's not something you typically get, but that is what you get when you have an enclosure that is larger. You're able to get loud and deep at the same time. One thing about these is that off axis is not as forgiving as some of the other speakers like the UB5. So they're very directional. So I tested it off axis and I wanted to see how it would react to you you know, placing it directly on axis versus tilting it slightly outward. And it does vary greatly. And for some people, they're not gonna like that. Some people want a wider sweet spot. And these are not that type of speaker. These are the type of speaker where you, placement is key. You have to make sure that you place them correctly in order to get the sound that you want. Luckily, you can tilt them outwards if you want a little bit less trouble, and you can tilt them towards you if you like a brighter, sharper treble response. You kind of tilt your speakers away from your ears, the softer, the highs are gonna be. So I'm gonna see if you can notice that here. I'm gonna turn the right, the right speaker. So did you notice a difference when I towed the speakers 
out instead of in. Did you notice that the highs got a little bit less bright? One other thing that I noticed about these is that you may want to experiment with the grills on versus the grills off because it does change the sound slightly. So experiment and see what you like. For me, I like them with the grills on and that's rare. I usually like speakers with the grills off, but I like the way they sound with the grills on and I like the way they look with the grills on as well. So let's take a quick look at the speaker itself. So as you can see, it has a very nice wood finish. I really like the veneer on this. It looks a lot better than some of the other ones that I've seen and it actually has a little bit of a texture to it. Some of the nicest veneer that I've seen on a speaker in this price range. So on the website, it says that these are hand veneered and that might explain why it's so precise and it looks better than what I'm used to seeing on some of the other speakers. On the back, you're gonna see that it's a ported design and it has two ports. It also has dual binding posts in a configuration that's a little bit different from what you're normally used to seeing and it's what I found on the Wharfdale Diamond 11.1s as well. I found that depending on the type of plugs you have, sometimes it's a little bit weird to place them in different angles like that, but it still works. If you're into bi-wiring or bi-amping, you can do that as well. On the front, you'll see the six and a half inch woven Kevlar cone base driver and the one inch woven textile tweeter. You'll also notice that the tweeter is offset slightly, so each speaker is a little bit different. So you can have a choice of putting it on the left or the right, depending on where you want the tweeter. You'll also notice that there's metal around the tweeter and the entire baffle is inset from the outside of the cabinet. So their website claims a frequency response of 45 hertz to 20 kilohertz and a power rating from 20 to 100 watts. These are four ohms and they have a sensitivity of 88 dB. As far as the grill, it's very different. The grill material is very thick and they call it tungsten, but yeah, it's very different. It's not that thin material that you're used to seeing. It's a thicker material that's kind of squishy. Interesting. There's a lot of materials going on here. You have the metal around the tweeter, you have the wood veneer, and then there's also this other type of texture on the baffle itself. As always, I have to put these on the speaker leaderboard. Let's see how they do. All right, so we're here at the speaker leaderboard and we have the Denton 85th anniversary. And so for best bookshelf, hmm. Best bookshelf, I'm gonna go ahead and just put them at the top. These are my favorite bookshelf speakers because unlike the SVS Ultras, which I said sound awesome with a sub, these Dentons do not require a sub in my opinion. In most cases, they have bass that goes down lower than the SVS Ultra and the UB5s. Now UB5s also have some pretty serious bass, but these 85th anniversaries match those but they have bass that extends out even further and it also plays loud. And that's the thing that I liked about the SVS Ultras. All right, so let's see. So best under a thousand dollars, I'm gonna have to also put them at the very top spot for the very same reasons I just said. Best overall sound quality, regardless of price. So let's see, I'm going to put these Denton 85th anniversaries above the UB5 because they play as low, they are flatter, and they can play louder. I'm gonna put them above the SVS Ultras because they can play as loud and they don't require a sub. So, boom, top spot for the Denton 85th anniversary. Not everyone's gonna love the way they look, but I have a hard time imagining that somebody's not gonna like the way that they sound. So they are trickier with regards to placement than some of these other ones like the UB5s. You can tow them in, you can keep them facing forward and off axis is very smooth across the board. And the SVS, a little bit more picky. These Dentons are the most picky of the three, but once you get them dialed in, man, they sound awesome. So there you have it, the Wharfdale Denton 85th anniversary. Take the top spot from the SVS Ultra. At the end of the video, I'm gonna have the sound demo, so stay tuned if you wanna compare for yourself. That'll be at the end in case you're interested. So in conclusion, who are these for? These speakers are definitely not for everybody. They're not the cheapest speakers, they're not the smallest speakers, and they're not the most modern looking. When I first unboxed these and listened to them, the first thing I said is that these sound like old school speakers. Yeah, you know what that reminded me of? Is it reminded me of, of old school speakers and what i mean by that is they sounded like a bigger speaker you know the older speakers were bigger speakers and this sounded to me like what you'd expect from something with a much bigger cabinet with something with a minimum of an eight inch woofer 
that's how low the bass went on these. And that's how authoritative the bass was. Unlike older speakers, this still sounded clean. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the thing about these. They look old school and in a way they sound old school. Nowadays, you don't have a lot of speakers that play down into those frequencies. Typically like the SVS, you have speakers that are meant to be used with a sub. These, I don't think you need it with a sub. I think a lot of people who like two channel audio are gonna be perfectly happy with these. And that's why they took my top spot. Stand alone, they do well by themselves, and I think they're pretty amazing. Now, whether it's worth the $899 price tag, that's gonna be up to you. I know that's expensive for a lot of people, and you know, I can definitely say it's not a cheap speaker, but is it worth it? I would say, I would say yes. You have to try it out for yourself, but if you're looking for speakers under $1,000, take a listen. So that's pretty much it. Thank you to MoFi Distribution for sending these out to me for a review. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And if you're interested in hearing my podcast or becoming a Patreon, I have a lot of other stuff on there that's not on this channel. Make sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash joeintel. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye. Tap on the speakers. So this is the left speaker, solid. Right speaker, both. All right, so there you go. Let me go back over here, play some more music.
Thank you. 